Gemini. Hi guys. How are you? I'm Chris. Welcome to your February reading. So if I seem a little out of sorts right now, I just got done doing a private reading. It was really a taxing one. It was an hour and like 15 minutes long. And then I realized my microphone wasn't on the entire time. So I'm a little bummed. But that's why I came to you guys, right? Because you guys always make me feel better. That's what we do, Gemini's, right? We make things lighthearted. We make things fun. And in February, y'all, that's where our energy needs to be focused. On our passions. On our fun, right? As I say that, we get the Princess of Cups. Dreamy, fun, passionate, creative, good times. Right? But with a purpose. This isn't just about, you know, going out and partying. This isn't about having fun. This is about reinvigorating the areas in, of our life with like a newfound passion. Right. In the last few months, we've talked a lot about getting serious, right? Uh, finding our, our lighthearted selves again after, um, you know, going through difficult emotional times. And now it almost feels like a culmination of a lot of those things, right? How do we embody this energy? How do we dream big about the future, right? We are in Aquarius season. We have our ruling planet Mercury in Aquarius right now. Good time to think big, to dream about the future, to make future plans, right? And then what I also love about this card coming out first is that later in the month, we're moving into Pisces and Mercury is moving into Pisces as well. And so is Venus. So a lot of good, dreamy, playful, um, pleasure seeking energy. But Gemini, I want to say for us, it's not going to be about what's this guy? Oh, hey, the fool. So it's not going to just be about self indulgent fun, right? It's about I lost my train of thought. That's always happens when these cards come out like this, the nine of swords. Okay. So let me stop my speech here and start getting to these cards because I'm getting distracted and I keep losing my train of thought. So princes of cups as our basis of our situation or our central situation. And then we have the fool, right? What I was saying about looking to the future, taking on new adventures, that culmination of what I was saying before with like the lightheartedness, the playfulness, the passion, right? But also like all the emotional lessons that we've learned. The intuition powers that we've gained, right? Learning to trust ourselves, learning to trust our instincts. Because there's still a lot of this going on. This nine of swords, like anxiety, this nine of swords, stress. And I think it's because we're not quite here yet, right? I feel like we're vacillating between seriousness and play and seriousness and play. And Gemini, like it's hard for us to function in the middle, right? We always are going back and forth between extremes. And I think right now this is kind of causing some tension in our heads, right? Whether it's like with regards to our relationships, with regards to our jobs, with regards to our friend circles, I feel like there's a lot of back and forth. Now I want to hang out with these people. Now I need to be a hermit. Now I'm serious about this job. Now I can't wait to get out of it. Now I'm like really into this person. Now I'm not so sure. 
Now I feel like I've moved on, but wait. Here comes the ex, like, calling on your phone, and now all of a sudden, like, am I moved on? Do I know what I want? If you guys are like me, Gemini's, I feel like we kind of soak up a lot of other people's energy. We, we have a problem with boundaries. And we have a problem with like energetic boundaries, right? We kind of give too much of ourselves sometimes. We like to be liked. We like to like have everything going well around us, having people getting along. So sometimes that comes at the sacrifice of ourselves. And so the Princess of Cups here, while it's not indulgent, it's about giving ourselves pleasure. Yes, that way, if you're like, you're gonna have your mind in the gutter like that, you filthy animals. But really trying to find the middle ground, right? Really trying to find the middle ground, really trying to understand our purpose. When I say passion, putting passion in the things, it's almost like giving them meaning, right? Going where there's meaning. Finding out what your dreams are, finding out who you are, right? We have all these different personalities in our head all this, at, all, at any given moment, right? These swords are just like all these different burdens, all these different thoughts, all these different directions that we get pulled in, right? What do they say about Gemini? We're the jack of all trades, right? Which is great. It sounds like we can do a lot of things. But one of the things people say about our sign is that like we don't really have follow through. Jack of all trades, master of none, right? What is this guy? Queen of Pentacles. To me, this energy is about taking a step back. Being a little bit of an isolationist if necessary. Right, with the Queen of Pentacles, like being a homebody, taking care of your environment, right? This feels like a very self-nurturing, self-care kind of month for us. Yes, playful. Yes, there's room for fun. Like, I'm not saying you can't be social, but it's about really pulling it back in a big way, right? Focusing on your career, imbibing your career and your goals, right? With this like spirit of happiness, right? Yeah, and you know, if this pertains to you in terms of a relationship or whatever, that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's all good and well, but with the Queen of Pentacles here, It's about getting your house in order. It's about paying attention to your health, right? Paying attention to your diet, organizing your house, keeping it clean. Because I think what we're, what we're, the fool here is sort of two things. One, it's sort of a sense of moving out of this like thoughtless, um, improvising way of living. But also it's like looking to the future with a sense of adventure. Right now we have Mars and Sagittarius. Right? Good energy for, and then with also Mercury and Aquarius, like good energy for big ideas, building up of ambition. So far, I don't think this is a month of like really acting. This is sort of like healing to me, right? That's the point of this withdrawal is like to heal, to get your head right, 
to figure out who you are and what you're about and where you're going. To get all those other voices out of your head. To take the voices that like are actually yours and give them like a cohesive goal, right? That's another thing that's great about Mars and Sagittarius. Like it's a perfect time to aim, to point like your arrow in the direction of what you want to attain. And then six of swords. So where do we end up, right? Moving on from this shit. Coming out of this place, right? Like, do you see? There's like almost a story here. A story about a dreamer. A young, playful, innocent dreamer. Who feels like they have the whole world ahead of them. Right? Too naive to be scared. Thinking that anything is possible, ready to take it on. And then here comes the crushing reality. This is sort of that, that burden on the Gemini spirit. Of like, yeah, everything's fun and everything's going to work out. And then the world slaps you in the face. Right? Maybe that Saturn and Sag, now Saturn and Capricorn, is slapping you in the face. And saying, hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, you thought everything was good? Right? Like, there's still all this shit to deal with. Maybe it's been neglected. Maybe you've been having too much fun. Acting a damn fool. Or just like letting things go. And that's the brilliance of Saturn and Capricorn. Is this going to make you very aware of where you've been doing the work and where you haven't been? You're going to be reaping what you sow. And if you haven't been putting in the work, like, you know, this is like all these unfinished projects. These are like a endless to-do list that just is not getting done. Or maybe, like I've said before, you're going back and forth between the sense of like being super productive and then being super self-indulgent and lazy. So come home to yourself, Gemini. Come home to being comfortable in your own body, in your own head. We're a sign of thought. Right, and that's what I like about uh, Mercury moving into Pisces. It sort of relaxes things. It sort of lets us like feel and stop like overanalyzing and overthinking and beating ourselves up. Now Pisces can beat themselves up a lot. Actually, the Pisces I know, you know, they do put a lot of accountability onto themselves for things. Too much. I get mad at them. I'm like, can you stop? It's not always your fault. I appreciate the fact that you're trying to grow from this, but like some things are actually just other people's fucking faults. You ever hear the expression or my mom always used to say this to me that like a cluttered room, like a cluttered space is a sign of a cluttered mind. That's what I was saying about this housekeeping stuff, right? If you look around your physical space, is it neat and tidy and in order? If you look at your money, is it well managed? Are you putting it in the right places? Are your priorities straight, Gemini? So maybe this Princess of Cups is about that, is about this like distractedness, is about this like young, I'm not taking things seriously, as seriously as I should. You know, I could tell you for myself, I've realized like, especially over the last two years, which is the Saturn and Capri uh, Sagittarius, like 
I had my priorities all mixed up. And sure, I needed to go through that all to grow and like to become more grounded in myself. So you can't beat ourselves up too much for it if this is what you've been going through too. But now is the time to get it together. Now is the time to make the sacrifices. Right? Capricorn is about sacrifice. It's about putting off short-term pleasure for the long-term benefits. And then what do we get? We get moving on. We get moving forward. Right? The Six of Swords is the promise that like this work that we're doing is going to pay off. This like troubled way that we've been is going to be part of our past. We're not going to live in this like unconscious way anymore. It's time to put the thought into your life. Right? So for example, like if you've just been so like butthurt over like love and it's been distracting you, you've been obsessed about this person and you know, like I can relate to that, right? You've just been obsessed about this person and consumed with what they're doing and, and you know, neglecting your own life because you're trying to get on their page or get their attention or like, you know, you're at a job and you're just, your head is not in the right place. Maybe it's that like the job that you're at is not right for you and you've just been kind of going through the motions. Because like other things are on your mind. Seven of Pentacles, first path. I'm sorry if my tone is like a little annoyed. I think I'm a little annoyed with, you know, I'm, I'm not annoyed with myself, but then at the same time, a little bit am. Because it just feels like even though there's all this sense of lessons that there was so much wasted time. So much lack of follow through. And it's cute to say like, oh, that's just how we are. Sure. But like at some point, Gemini, it's time to grow up and get your shit together. And I'm sorry, but like put your feelings aside. Stop giving them so much weight over your mind. Put your mind to work for you. Right? There's one thing in the world that we can control. One single thing. Our thoughts. We can't even control our bodies. Right? If I pinch you and you feel pain, what can you do about it? anything but what you can do is control your experience of that pain you can control how you're going to let it affect you how you're going to let that pain affect your life what you're going to let it do to you right this is like a principle of um of like a philosophy of stoicism. These cards jumped out, so I'm just going to take them all. Stoicism is the idea that like the only thing we can control in the world is ourself. So if we stop trying to have as our minds, as our thoughts. So if we stop trying to have control over outside things and control our thoughts, that's where we have real power. That's where we can get out of this place. Right? You can't help sometimes that things are on your mind and they weigh on you, right? But you can't help how much they affect you. You can't help how much you let them distract you from what's good for yourself. Do you just like sink into a depression and drink your face off or do you like Brood about it for a little while and pick yourself back up. You know, there's, um, when it comes to writing, 
because I I'm a writer. That's what I went to school for. That's what I'm pursuing. I can't remember the writer who said this, but there's a quote where it says, um, "I only write when I'm inspired," and I make sure that every morning at six a.m. I'm inspired. Right? It's about doing what you've got to do to get yourself in the headspace to get real happiness. Because look what we have here. We have the Ace of Wands, right? So there's lots of energy here available to us to make things happen. To push ourselves forward. Right? The Princes of Pentacles, we have goals. We have aspirations. And like we're setting that in motion this month, right? We're laying good plans for our financial future. Laying good plans for our material well-being, for our physical health. And then like the mental health and emotional health kind of falls into place. Right? And I mean the Hierophant. These cards to me go hand in hand. The Hierophant is the Taurus card. The Taurus is all about slow and steady progress towards like your goals, right? That's one of the things that Taurus is good at. Manifesting, right? And with these two things, it's almost like your plans are blessed. The Hierophant is the manifestation of God's will on earth. If you don't want to like God, it's like the higher spirit, the powers that be, your highest being, you're even you're just your subconscious telling you what you need to be doing. Right? So this is big change, guys. This is transformative in our careers. This is our homes looking different. This is our income looking different. This is our physical appearance on fleek. My light just shut off. I swear this thing lasts an hour and then it dies. It's... So February goal for me, invest in a better light. <laughs> right? That's the kind of material kind of climbing the social ladder thing, building yourself up energy that the Hierophant brings with this spirit of gusto, right? And then, like I said before, the Princess of Cups. This, like, very earthy energy is being, like, fueled by this emotional impetus. By this desire, this imagination, this sense of creativity. This, like, daydreamy part of ourselves being put into action and making things real in the real world. Sorry, it's funny, like I was expecting this to be like lighthearted, but I'm feeling a little just somber. I don't know why. And then we have more fire energy here, guys. The two of wands and the three of wands. Making the choice to be right with yourself. Really taking your future seriously. And not just your future, but recognizing that right now, the things you do right now in this moment are going to be the things that fuel your ability to have what you want. Does that make sense? I think I kind of talked a little bit in a circle there. Not in a circle, but like rambly. These two cards together are getting serious about your future. There's so much here about getting serious about your future. Even the, the fool, how we started off with, right? The energy of just like ready to move forward. It's almost as if like he's starting this adventure into this world. 
where he gets serious and gets grounded. Maybe stops like traveling so much for a second and like creates a home base, right? Just for like this narrative purposes, right? Chases the dreams, gets in touch with the passions, you know, do some creative visualization this month. There's a great meditation that, that I've done where it's like you try on different versions of the futures. There's a curtain and like you pull it up and you see yourself waking up on a morning a week from now. And then it goes back down and then it comes back up and then you're waking up a month from now. Right. And then you do it again for like six months from now and you keep going and you keep building this vision of the future. You try on different alternatives and see what feels good and that helps you navigate right that creative imagination helps you see clearly where you're going and where you want to go bottom of the deck is the prince of cups so first of all again there's a lot of people here we got the princess and queen of pentacles we have the princess of cups and now the prince of cups so if you're dealing with, let's, let's do the obvious stuff, right? If you're dealing with an earth sign or you have like earth sign rising in your chart, this could be those things becoming serious. So if you're in a relationship with an earth sign, you can see progress there. If you have earth in your chart, you can see those parts of yourself becoming more serious this month. Similarly with the princess and the prince, right? If you have water signs that you feel romantic about, I don't know, romantic. Yeah, sure. Or if you have water in your chart, like I'm a cancer rising. These are those qualities coming to bear. That sensitivity that creative drive, the emotional drive. So at the bottom of the deck with the Prince of Cups, I think Gemini is really ready to create. Gemini is really ready to be in love. Gemini is really ready to have that sick body, bro. Look at it. You know what I'm saying? Just for shits and giggles. Five of Swords. So still like that mental clutter, right? This is what's underlying all of this. This is like us ready to create and be passionate. And then there's just this mental clutter, this strife, this struggle underneath. To me, the Five of Swords is like mental struggle. Right? Kind of self-defeating of yourself. Maybe because we're still carrying baggage from the past with the Six of Cups. Or maybe, again, once underneath it all, we're ready to be in this place of joy. And giving of ourselves in the right way. Maybe what this is also saying is that like part of this struggle and what's keeping us from living this Prince of Cups like fantasy. Where like we're not the princess anymore. Where we're actually making moves towards the things that we want. And not thinking about them, right? Giving too much of ourselves. Being too much like in our own heads and like creating conflict for ourselves. I keep dropping cards. Alright, I'm just going to draw like one more. I want to pull like another outcome card and then we'll get to the oracle. So I've been really busy with personal readings, but they're still on sale about I lowered the price. I mean, I lowered the discount, though. It's about a 30 percent just because there's just so much demand that I had to like kind of make it more reasonable for me to deal with. 
But check those out. Those, those have been going really well. I've been getting great feedback from that. They're a lot of fun to do too. That's in the description. Check it out if you want. Um, and I'll show you the spread here. It's a little messy, but we'll look at it. All right, just like one more outcome card and we'll get to the Oracle. So after all this nonsense I've been talking about, withdrawing from socializing and maybe putting the priorities too much in the wrong, in the wrong place, we have the Three of Cups. But this is like, for me, the end of the month. This is for me after we've spent this month getting our shit together, we can celebrate, right? You can have fun again. You can be happy go lucky and like enjoy yourself and enjoy the company of your friends. So Gemini, there's promise on the horizon of good times, right? I didn't even talk about the Seven of Pentacles because all those other cards fell out. This is us being patient. This is an extension of like, kind of, Jesus. Do you see what I'm dealing with here? You're a mess, kid. Like what happens in between the princess and the queen? Waiting, being patient, taking our time, going slow, being easy on ourselves, not expecting instant results. Right? Letting things unfold in their time. So I don't even know if like I want to show you these cards because they're all over the place, but let's take a quick look because I know you guys like to see the cards. Also, I need a better tripod so I can actually angle this without having to hold it up like this all over the place. Right? So you see, like I kind of like the way some of these have come out together, right? We have the Ace of Wands and the Seven of Pentacles with the Queen of Pentacles and the Princess of Cups on the top row, right? Like that chutzpah, that drive to like be patient and let things work themselves out to focus on like getting your house together. And then we have this fun. We have this daydreaminess. We have this like passion again, right? It feels so good to be here when like this is all taken care of. When we've been in this place for long, we can let go and like unwind. Right? Because like we have big things that we're manifesting, big career goals, big financial goals, right? It's tax season. Put that money to good use, right? Getting right with ourselves and seeing our future clearly, figuring out our path, figuring out what we want and who we are, and then just kind of like doing the work until it comes in. And then what we have here, this worry and anxiety surrounded by this like playful energy, this lighthearted stuff here, this fun, this adventure, and then moving on. We're moving on Gemini. We're moving on this month. But only if you do the work, right? That's the promise of Saturn and Capricorn. Only if you do the work, nothing is going to just come to you. Recognize that the harder things get, the closer you are to your success. I'll take them. Cards are also popping out besides like the cards just can't sit still today. Every reading I've been doing, they've been flying out. They've been falling on the floor. 
Okay, so we need to remember, Gemini, that we are the magician. We can harness this energy of infinite potential, infinite possibilities, right? Not only do we have the skills to bring it into being, but we have the imagination and we have the connectedness to like the higher power, to the higher sense of things, right? That's why we're so good at making connections. We understand energy at a like intuitive level. We understand how to manipulate energy. That's why our card is the magician, right? So there's a lot available to you. And I, I want to say, Gemini, don't fucking waste it. Don't waste it by being sad, by being lazy, by being idle, right? All of these, I was going to say, I was going to show you one, but all of these together, doing the work, putting yourself through a sort of self-induced stage of growth. Doesn't matter what your age is here. It's about leveling up. And how do we level up? We let go of what used to be. We let go of the stories we told ourselves about who we are. And we are okay with going into the darkness. We're okay with navigating this, even if it's by ourselves. Because we know the promise of the labyrinth is that if we can make it to the middle, we find great wealth. And if we make it back out, we bring that wealth with us into our material lives and to the lives of people around us. So get right about your story, Gemini. Create. With the eclipse in Aquarius in the middle of the month, it's going to be a lot about letting go of shedding of like old ideas of allowing new, bigger things that we couldn't even maybe imagine to come into our, our, our view into our perspective, but be willing to take the journey, be willing to sacrifice what you have to sacrifice one thing. Think about it even as like an offering to whatever powers that be that you believe in. I'm going to give this up for the sake of this thing. I'm going to give up. You know, last month I did a dry January and I was so fucking productive. It wasn't funny. Right. I'm going to sacrifice drinking for my career. I'm going to sacrifice my social life to spend more time with my family. I'm going to let go of my desires for that person so that I can like hone in on myself. And then come March, we'll be brand new and we'll be ready to celebrate because we've been doing what we had to do. And now we're in a better place. So to sum it all up, Gemini, like February is a good month to make plans, to take stock, to let shit go. Like stop, uh, like stop clinging to things. We're supposed to be a sign that is so good at like letting things go. At moving on. Because we see all the possibilities. Because we have this imagination that lets us see that there's more and bigger and better. And with that Aquarius energy, like that's even just making it even easier for us. To take hold of our fates and our destinies and like reinvent ourselves. All right. So. In the comment, in the description, 
links to personal readings. Also my Instagram, follow me there. Please like, comment, subscribe. I love the dialogue we have. Um, and Gemini, take heart. I know we thought we were home free, but like there's still time and effort that needs to be put into things so that we can be truly free so that we can really like what I think about with the three of cups. There's that, there's that, uh, Drake song drinking every night because we drink to our accomplishments, right? That's what's in store for us. There's nothing better than like having fun because you know that everything is done. Everything is in its right place. You sacrifice and you earned it. Right? Gemini, earn it. It's not enough this month to get by on charm. It's not enough this month to get by on like natural intelligence and charisma. That will get you by, but it's not going to get you to the next level. It's not going to get you to that dream relationship, to that dream career, to that, like those zeros in your bank account. It's not. So stop relying on that charm and fucking get to work. Find the passion in your work and let it guide you. Get inspiration and motivation from wherever you can find it. All right, I'm done talking to y'all. It's been real. Um, you know what to do. Do the damn thing. I love you. I'll see you in March. Bye-bye.